Wagovi, Ozempic, whatever you want to call it, are we ready for it? I don't think so. There are just too many risks and too many unknowns. I think you're wrong. Um, I think Ozempic, Wagovi, whatever you call it again, um, GLP-1s, uh, they're a game changer. I think the cells prove it. There's like 100 million people in this country that are obese and on, that being unaddressed leads to heart disease, diabetes. And so now we have a drug that can help people lose 15 to 20 percent of weight in a year. I think we're ready. I think that that extreme amount of weight loss in such a short amount of time is really unhealthy and we don't even have enough research to show exactly what those effects will be on people. But what we do know is that a 2021 study found that people who got off of Wagovi regained that weight back, two thirds of that weight back in you know, just a short amount of time after stopping taking that drug. And there are also some serious side effects like pancreatitis, gallbladder problems, kidney problems, um, and even stomach paralysis where people's whole gastrointestinal system is paralyzed and they can't stop throwing up to the point that they have to go to urgent care. I think that that is just, you know, a really awful side effect for just dropping a few pounds. Even if there is side effects and there's side effects with all medications, the benefits definitely outweigh any risk. I know there's new studies that show that Ozempic GLP-1s are helping people reduce the risk for heart attack strokes by 20%. There's just a new study that came out that people with sleep apnea are reducing the severity of their sleep apnea. I think there's a lot of benefits that are, we're still discovering on these drugs. Other medications are also able to address those issues, but they don't have these types of side effects. And for people that are looking to lose weight, there are healthier alternatives that don't involve you know, new kind of risky drugs that we still don't 100% know the long-term effects of. I just don't think that these types of drugs can replace exercise or a balanced diet or, you know, just any of the other alternatives that people have for losing weight if that's what they want to do. Of course people would need to, you know, exercise, diet to lose weight, but I do think Ozempic can give people that kickstart, that, you know, that confidence of seeing results to, you know, start that journey on their own. But that, starting that journey starts with a $1,300 a month price tag, a $1,000 a month price tag for ZepBound by Eli Lilly. That is the price that some people pay for monthly rent. How can we even say that that is something that's accessible for the average person to kickstart that journey, like you said? These manufacturers are offering rebates and discounts that make it a lot cheaper and affordable for people. I know there's a Morgan Stanley survey that found that um, about two thirds of people are fully covered by insurance, or at least the people that responded to the survey. Insurance fully covered their costs, and the people that ended up paying out of pocket, the average payment was like $200 a month. So I think it is affordable. As we go on and there's more competition, uh, we'll see the prices drive down a little. But some employers and health plans have even stepped away from offering coverage of these drugs because they are just so expensive and then they put a burden even on these insurance companies when insurance companies themselves are saying that it's too expensive that they can't even shoulder that cost what does that really tell us about the long-term sort of sustainability of being able to access these drugs Eli Lilly Novo Nordisk are already developing you know even more efficient drugs um, they're developing pill forms of these medications which I think is uh, gonna help people save. And it's not just them, you know, the Amgen, Viking Therapeutics, uh, Regeneron, they're all also developing their own drugs. And I think this increase in competition um, will make these drugs more accessible. And yet, even with all of these new competitors and Novo and Eli Lilly, again, trying to come out with new drugs, they can't even meet demand uh, with their existing production. There are shortages both um, for Wagovi and ZepBound by Eli Lilly. Um, the FDA found that there are shortages for several different of these dosages in the U.S. And so these companies are still putting out new things but can't even keep up with existing demand. Um, and people are turning to black market drugs from wellness spas that are not FDA approved that they don't even know what's in them because now there's this crazy hype around these drugs that celebrities and influencers have pushed onto people. Um, and these companies now can't even meet where the needs are at. The, just the demand and the supply constraints of these drugs show how much people want these drugs and are showing how much interest there is in people to lose weight and you know start a healthier lifestyle. We don't really know if long term this is something that's going to be sustainable, that's going to actually help people continue to keep the weight off. Existing studies have already shown us that that's not the case and so maybe with more development and more studies and just more use cases we'll be able to have a clear answer, but as of right now, I don't think we can say anything yet. Thanks for watching. Check out qz.com for more.